Hello and welcome to another edition of Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, our topic today is how to build a triptych. Now, a triptych is one big image split into three sections. Now, in the old days of the Renaissance, typically they'd have the center section, usually a little bit larger, and then slivers on the side of the other images, and then when you put it on the wall, you had a gap in between them. What we're going to do is kind of do a modern day triptych, and we're going to start with a size that we want hanging on the wall, and then what we're going to do is figure out, because we want to stay on a budget, the panels on the side, what, what's, the, what's, what's the frame size that that's some standard? So we don't have to pay extra for framing. All right, so let's get started, and hello everyone, glad to see you. And by the way, this is our new um, questions and answers so we can see everyone. If you have a question, please drop it in the chat like this so we can answer them before the show. And you see that thumbs up? Please make sure you hit that thumbs up to give us a little extra um, acknowledgement so we can show that to the uh, producers. All right, so here's my our screen. And I'm going to choose this image here. Now, I want to make this uh, into a 24 2 foot by 3 foot poster. So I want this to be a 2 foot by 3 foot. So what I'm going to do inside Luminar is make sure the original crop is that. So I'm going to click edit. Now this is a final image. Um, keep in mind, you, depending on the, the pixel count, and the size determines how large you could print that. So I'm going to come over here and under uh, the ratio, I'm going to enter my own custom values. Here we go. And it's a 24 by 36. And if you notice, it's already cropped to that section. Well, this is great. I don't need to crop. Well, I'll just double click to, to lock it in. All right, so now we have a set. Now that I have this set, I did a little research and I went and I found that you could purchase in the, in the United States a 12 by 24 inch um, frame. So if we could buy those standard, it's cheaper, I'm going I'm to use three of those. So what we're going to do is we'll come back to the composition tool and now under the custom settings, We'll enter custom. I know, there we go. I know I want it to be 12 inches by 24. And I'll hit enter, and it drops it right smack in the center. Now, when we're doing this, we have to make sure, like this is a really good image to choose from because the tree, the rock, of course, and the tree on the other side, it's not that big of a deal where we're cropping. If this were a person, which we'll show, and you're cropping right down their face, it's going to look a little weird. So here, this is nice. I'm going to accept it. And then from here, we'll export it. Now under the export, we have a choice between formats. We do JPEG or we could do TIFF. But let's stick with JPEG. Actual size. Now for Windows, we have the resolution well, we can store it, I believe, in the Mac version. Mac takes care of that for you. But we'll leave it at 240th of a sec, 240th of pixels per inch. The quality for here, I'm going to crank that to 100. Typically, 75 is fine. I'm going to crank it to 100. And then I'll select a folder, and I'll hit uh, Export, and it brings it to that folder. Now that I have it set, we'll come back over again. And... Here it is. Instead of recropping anything, I'm just going to move it over all the way to the right, lock it in, and then export it. And from here, by the way, the name I would give it, let's say dash panel three. Make all make sure all the settings are say the same. There we go, bring it all the way over, and then Boom, hit export again. And then last, the last one, same thing. 
the moment I hit um, composition, it keeps it right where it's at. I'll move it over to the all the way to the left. Hit enter, export, and here we go again. Again, give it let's say panel one. Now, typically, if I were to export this, in fact, I'll do this one. I'm going to leave it in the trash it folder. If I do this, my settings should remain the same when I come back again. All right. So now that we have all that set, we'll give it a couple seconds for it to export it. There, we have it set. And just to save us time, I did export it uh, previously. Here it is, three panels. And here they are. Panel one. There's two. And there's three. So once again, so here's panel one. There's panel two. And then there's panel three. All right? So... Let me continue with one of the other ones, but before I do, let's um, look at some of the questions. And let me bring this down. Let's see, landscapes. Here we go. Um, one moment. Let me pull this back up. And it was, let's see, it was here, landscapes. Oh, I know. Showing only edited photos. Show all photos. There we go. All right, we'll use this one next. All right, let's look at some of these questions. All right. Um, Diana Van Horn. Hello, Diana. Um, good. So, the Diana said this is exactly something uh, she wanted to do. Any particular reason to use 24 rather than 300? 300. So, Diana, I'm glad you asked me. By the way, Diana is my private and personal copy editor, um, so she makes me appear really intelligent when I write articles. So I thank you for that, Diana. Um, so Diana is asking, why 240 versus 300 pixels per inch? Not DPI, pixels per inch. And honestly, 240 is kind of old school. I should just say the heck with it. Stick with 300. Yes, 300 is fine. If you talk to your printers, they may even tell you 180. 180 is sufficient. So check with your printers on what they want because remember, we're printing at full size. So they're getting it at full resolution. If they had to increase it, that's why they want 300 because they have more pixels to work with. But we're telling them, hey, look, this is the exact size we want. Have at it. You can get away, believe it or not, with 72 pixels per inch, if it's full size, all right? So to be, to, play, to be on the safe side, 240 to 300, let's just stick with 300 um, pixels per inch, and that, that'll give the print company more than enough. If you go too large, then the images are gonna be so large, you can't export that to them, all right? So let me jump back in. Hope that answered your question. Um, yes. So Julie asked, um, Julie asked, uh, should you edit? I'm sorry, right here. Do you edit um, the image first before you do the panels? I do. Yes, I, I definitely do. So this way, they're all consistent. Tom is asking, how would you crop for more than three panels? Let's say if you wanted to do four, um, you're really pushing me on this one, right? So what you would have to do, Tom, in a case like that, is do your homework and research on your pen. Let, let's say you were printing it to Metal Mural, which is a local company, well, a company in the United States. They don't care the size that you print as long as you stay within a certain dimension here and a length. And I want to say it was 20 inches, I can't remember, but let, let's just say 20 by 30. So in your case, in your scenario, uh, Tom, you could, let's say 20 inches, 20, 40, 60, 80. So you can have an 80 inch print by let's say 36 down. And then you do the same thing with the cropping. You would crop one, two, three, all the way, all the way around, all right? Now in a case like this, honestly, I would use Luminar 
to do all my killer edits and everything. And then you need a, a tool like Photoshop because it has a ruler in it. Otherwise, um, there's, there's workarounds inside Luminar. Three was easy because it was consistent. Four, you'd have one smack in the middle. Well, that's not where you want it. You could move it off to the left, to the right. That's not a problem. It's the one here and the one here that's going to be an issue. So it's better to have a program, like I said, such as Photoshop that actually can divvy it up. Or most of the time you just send it off to the printer and tell them, split this up into four segments, print each of those segments to this size. So I hope that answers your question. All right, now let me get back to here. Yeah, so, so typically th this is how I would work through this real quick. I come to my templates and let it refresh. Let's pick one. I like fast fix. Look at that. Wow, that was fast. All right, so let, let's just say um, we like that edit. I want to just bomb through a real quick edit here. Good. Let's say um, structure. Bring out just a hint. Uh, let's say that sky look, looks okay. But let's see if we can make the sky look better. And four is my favorite. Let's see. You can tell us thinking. Okay, um, let's bring that sky exposure down just a little bit, or actually no, the opposite. Let's make it a little bit brighter. I'm going to an extreme just to see where it's at. Ah, yeah, that's not going to work. We'll do it like here. Sky temperature is fine. This is good. I probably defocus this guy just a little bit. All right. Now again, this was a real, real quick edit. Um, no, I just, I just did a real quick go through. So from this to this, just to give us something to work with. So again, we're visualizing it. We're done. We'll come over to the crop tool. And by the way, you, you gotta love how fast we could do Luminar. Um, you know, how quick we can do these edits. All right, so the 24 by 36, it's already that dimension. So let's change it in our custom. 12 by 24, beautiful. So that this for this image, that will look good because the, it, the house has to be able to stand on its own. All right, so uh, well, yeah. <laughs> a house better stand on its own. I meant in the photo, the house itself should stay on its own, and this is fine, all right? And then when you're when you're ready, you'll come back over again, and we'll continue and make those three those three panels, all right? Let me reset it, and there we go. All right, so now that I'm showing you, there we go. So now that we did that, let's get out of here, catalog, what we could do is keep in mind, if you have uh, an image, let's say, um, okay, like this. This right here may not work because when you do the cropping, in fact, let's just do the crop. Edit. And again, the cropping was because we said 24 by 36. Uh, so, I mean, you could make it work with different sizes. So let me come back up here. And original at a custom 12 by 24. Let's see if it would work. Nope, I'm, I stand corrected. This wouldn't be bad. Um, I think this would look good the way it's cropped like this. And then you have the left side and the right side. But again, you have to go through and decide which images would look good. You know, it's a triptych, which ones wouldn't. And again, I chose 24 by 36 because I know I could buy a 12 by 36 frame and they're really inexpensive. Put those three in, put them on the wall. If you're sending this off to a company like 
metal mural that prints directly on metal, and on the back of the metal, it has its own hanging system, then you don't need a frame. Then you can put it like this, all right? So that's just one way of, again, just to add a little bit of art to what you're doing. Um, I do have a couple metal mural prints where they're squares. They're 12 by 12 squares, 11 point, like 9, 4 or something, but they're squares and they're a quarter inch apart, four on top, three on bottom, hanging on the wall, and you look at it, oh, that's pretty cool. It's all individual. Now, they did that in the beginning because it was too big to print. Now they can print that size in metal, all right? So I hope that helped you. Let's see if there's other questions here. Um, let's see, do you still? Yeah, so, so yes, again, Julie, we do all of our editing first and then to it. Um, Russell says, oh, okay, yes. So, yeah, so there's no ruler tool in Luminar. Because, Tom, that's a, um, a graphics tool. And remember, Luminar is for photographers. So a graphics tool such as Photoshop would help you on that. Um, so then Russell says, could you divide... Yes, yeah, but like, like Tom just said, the, the trick would be to get the proper um, alignment because of the crop, all right? But again, that's not stopping you from using another tool, or, <laughs> don't laugh, you could actually take a ruler. You could actually take a ruler, put it on, on your, your um, computer, and then with not a, not a permanent marker, but grab a marker or something, and you could, in theory, just draw a line of where you want it to go. Now, that was something we used to do in the old, 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 very old days um, on the old monitors, and we'd pop that in there. Um, but that's, that's, that's a workaround if you don't have Photoshop. So I hope that helps. Um, Notion. Yeah, okay, so... Dave, Dave's asking, does Luminar have the ability of multiple images? Yeah, so now when you say the times and time um, or a time lapse, are you talking video? Because if, if it's for video, um, smart Russell, if it's for video, then no, you can't edit video. If they're individual images, yes, then what we would just end up doing is we would create our crop. Here, let me get to this here. Catalog. Um, let's come back up here. So what you would do is right click, adjustments, copy the adjustments, and then select the other images you want, right click, adjustments, paste the adjustments. All right? So Dave, again, if you're David, if you're talking about it being for a time lapse in a video, if you're talking about all stills from a time, the answer is yes. I just showed you how to do that there. And Russell, that's a good idea. Put platform the screen. Awesome. Well, guys, there you have it. Um, it's a really unique way to display your art, and if you really want to get creative. You can really do some mind-boggling, like the center piece could be, you know, let's say, um, what were we saying? We said uh, 36 by 24. So imagine the center piece being a 24 by 24 print, you know, a beautiful square. And maybe you extended the sides even further or even made them smaller. You know, you can make the sides smaller, the middle one bigger, it's entirely up to you. You can make some really cool artistic um, looks with this because that's what they did during the Renaissance. You know, they, they had this one beautiful painting, the center one held its own, and then the sides complemented to the center one. All right? Good. Awesome, David. So good. So, answered your question there. Awesome. Hey, guys, thank you so much for joining me. And if you like episodes like this, please um, bookmark it, send them to your friends, and hit that thumbs up. 
And we'll, and if you have any questions or suggestions for future shows, please leave those in the comments, and then we'll try to get to them as soon as we can. All right? Well, guys, thank you so much, and I'll see you at the next coffee break. Thank you.